Hello everyone, welcome back. So in the last class, we had discussed what is this Diffie-Hellman key exchange protocol. So Diffie-Hellman has given the idea how to uh, use this public key crypto system, but uh, they have not given any public key crypto system. In 1978, uh, Revist, Shamir, and Edelman they introduced the first practical and most popular public key crypto system called as RSA crypto system with the name R Shamir for S and then Edelman so it is very popular crypto system So the security is based on difficulty of factoring large composite number. Security is based on factoring large composite number. What do you mean by that? That means suppose I'm having P and Q, then it is easy to find n equal to PQ just multiply but suppose I am giving you n and I am asking you get the value of p and q then it is a hard problem actually it is an intractable problem you cannot solve it in the polynomial time algorithm that it so the security lies on this let us start with the RSA crypto system key generation let us see how do you generate the keys so again I am having Alice and Bob okay uh, Alice want to send something correct so what what is happening actually let us first see this is Alice this is Bob in PKC what happens uh, Bob see Alice want to send a message M to the Bob but what uh, he does what Bob does he will generate he will apply the key generation algorithm and he will get back a, a public key and a secret key say public key I'm calling it as P and a secret key S secret key he will be keeping only with himself and public key he will be revealing uh, for the public level so what uh, Alice will do Alice will encrypt his message uh, with the public key given by the Bob Bob's public key he will encrypt the message and send this to the Bob now Bob have the uh, dec uh, secret key S correct he can use the decryption key uh, decryption uh, algorithm with the secret key S and he can get the message correct it is something like uh, a simple example is a padlock do you know what is padlock padlock is uh, for locking you don't need any key but for unlocking you need a key correct so uh, this is you can see this is Bob's padlock Bob's have the secret key so what Bob is giving Bob is giving this padlock to Alice Alice will put a message in the briefcase and then put uh, this padlock correct for locking you don't need any key this padlock and he will send this briefcase locked briefcase to the Bob Bob uh, with the secret key he will uh, open this pad open this padlock and then he can get the message so this is the uh, uh, idea of uh, the public key crypto system okay now let us see the key generation algorithm and all Bob carefully select two large primes two large prime P and Q compute he computes n equal to PQ and then he will compute phi of n which is P minus 1 Q minus 1 okay and chooses the encryption key chooses a an encryption key encryption key call it as e which is less than phi of n okay such that gcd of 
e comma phi of n should be 1 we will be coming to it why the gcd should be 1 okay and compute computes the decryption key decryption key call it as d such that ed is equal to 1 modulo phi n so in short what is happening if you see ed is equal to 1 modulo phi n that means what this e should be invertible so for invertible i need this condition gcd of e and phi n should be 1 so e and d are inverse of each other this is what the condition that's why this gcd should be 1 so what is the public key for bob public key of bob is n comma e anybody is having it with n anybody is having n comma e they can encrypt this and this is publicly available secret key is the d correct plain text space is zn that is again publicly available with this so this is what the key generation algorithm bob will do he will get the public key and reveal the public key for the public and the secret key d now suppose alice want to send a message so how he will do let us see encryption to encrypt a message suppose you want to encrypt m belongs to say zn zn star okay alice computes c is equal to m raised to e modulo n this is the cipher text with the message m with the encryption key e he will just uh, embrace to find embrace to e this is the cipher text so c is the cipher text okay now how the decryption will happen see what uh, alice did alice uh, encrypted his message and send it to the bob now bob can decrypt it with his secret key what bob will do Bob can calculate message just by uh, finding C raised to D, C raised to D modulo n. Okay. Correctness is very easy. How can he get this? Let us see correctness. See, since ED is equal to 1 modulo n, modulo phi of n, correct? So, uh, let us see what is our C c is equal to m raised to e modulo n and we know that uh, say any uh, e raised to phi of n is equal to 1 modulo n correct we know this by all the euler's theorem okay now c is equal to m raised to e modulo n now i am computing c raised to z d so that will be m raised to e d modulo n correct but we know that uh, m raised to phi of n is 1 correct so this is actually m raised to e d modulo phi of n because uh, if i take uh, phi of n it is 1 so i can reduce everything to modulo phi of n modulo n so if i take e d modulo phi of n which is 1 so i will get my message m so this is what the correctness is so it was uh, the idea is very simple here now there were uh, so many so many actually attacks over there on this but before that let me just talk about RSA assumption and RSA problem as we had done in the case of TLP so the security of RSA crypto system is based on RSA assumption and RSA problem the security of RSA crypto system is based on RSA assumption and RSA problem let us see both what is RSA problem
the RSA problem is to compute M for a given C. To compute M for a given C, which is M raised to E modulo M. As simple as that. Where N is equal to PQ and all the condition, whatever you had, then N is the product of two primes and all. So given C equal to M raised to E, can you compute M? This is what RSA problem is. So that uh, the, all the condition N is equal to PQ and then GCD of E comma phi of N should be one with, okay. Now what is the RSA assumption? Yeah, if there exist, same, if there exist no probabilistic polynomial time that is PPT algorithm to solve RSA problem with some non negligible with some non negligible success probability then we say that RSA assumption hold correct yeah as in the case of uh, CDS assumption and DL uh, assumption the holding of RSA assumption implies that existence of a trapdoor one-way function that is the if uh, the what is the trapdoor here prime factorization of n if you know the prime factorization of n you can easily solve the so probability space in the in this assumption include the instance space plain text message and all the things okay various researcher have uh, various research have been conducted to find the relation between both the problem the relation analyzed in the paper breaking rsa may not be equivalent to the factoring breaking rsa may be as difficult as factoring uh, and to understand the relation between these two problems and there are uh, crypt, uh, so many cryptanalytic uh, attacks on rsa that is factoring attack uh, secret key factoring and suppose i am having phi of n then also computing phi of n and common modulus attack and low encryption exp uh, exponent attack if the encryption exponent we are using low then also small decryption attack meet in middle attack is possible in this rsa so uh, there was a paper 20 years attack on rsa so they have seen uh, in uh, it was in 2000 i think 2000 uh, so from 1978 to 2000 there are so many attacks and for RSA to uh, st uh, start using RSA uh, we we need R prime in such a, so let me just talk about that little bit RSA in practice So to use RSA, the first thing is uh, your uh, in order to follow the powerful quadratic C1 number field C factoring algorithm, the modulus should be at least uh, 1024 bits. That n n should be at least 1024 bits. and maybe more than that with the current scenario okay and selecting the primes prime should be selected which is actually which don't have a large difference that is p minus q should be small choose the prime such that p minus q should be on and make sure that they are of the almost same size or say 512 bits both of them are 512 bits like that 
in addition to this many author recommend that p and q should be strong primes what is strong prime that means p minus uh, 1 has large prime factor p plus 1 has large prime factor r minus 1 has large prime factor okay and choices of e and d we must choose the encryption and decryption uh, key that is e and d on the basis of security and efficiency both should be maintained because the, there are so called low encryption exponent attack low decryption uh, attack should not be possible so by it, uh, checking all the thing we should make sure and then for efficiency of rsa uh, see rsa encryption as well as decryption require one modular exponentiation uh, to improve the rsa encryption we uh, we wish to choose small encryption exponent but due to low encryption attack uh, we cannot do that to prevent uh, there are so many uh, different ways that is we can uh, in rsa with crt with chinese remainder theorem there is a technique to solve this rsa problem and then semantic security of rsa let me talk about what, what semantic security of rsa see what is the goal of adversary in general an adversary either tries to find the secret key or to decrypt the target cipher text get the some information uh, correct in addition to this adversary may try to distinguish encryption of two plain text with success probability exceeding 1 by 2 correct so crypto system in which the adversary cannot distinguish i'll write here crypto system in which adversary cannot distinguish cipher text in polynomial time provided that certain computation assumption hold certain computation assumption hold are said to have semantic security so we can define symmetric security as follows that is also called cipher text cipher text distinguishability distinguishability <coughs> what is that see an encryption function an encryption function say f from x to y and uh, two plain text suppose i am having two plain text say x0 and x1 which belongs to x and a cipher text and a cipher text say y which is f of xi for some r i belongs to 0 1 okay so what is the question question is is i equal to 1 that means given two plain text and a cipher text you have to uh, say that which is the encryption of uh, this cipher text whether it is xi or whether it is yi uh, sorry whether it is x1 or whether it is x2 if we can answer this question with success probability greater than 1 by 2 then encrypt uh, then the crypto system is not symmetrically secure otherwise it is semantically secure okay so the rsa is not semantically secure why rsa is not semantically secure 
accuracy is not semantically secure why it is not similar see given any two plain text suppose i'm having m0 and m1 since encryption is theme uh, yeah, is already known to us we can quickly find c that is m i raised to e we can find ci and check which ci is same as with the cipher text that you have given that why you have given i will just quickly check and uh, we'll get that we can easily determine correct uh, whether m1 raised to e is which m1 is uh, uh, the encryption of this file or C. Okay. One more uh, way you can say, suppose this is I'm saying first, one more way with the Jacobi symbol. Since uh, uh, GCD of E, comma phi of N is 1, so using property of Jacobi symbol, you can see that C of N, Jacobi symbol, will be same as M raised to E of N, which is same as M by N. Right, because this E is odd, so it does not uh, change the Jacobi symbol. So cipher text Jacobi symbol and plain text Jacobi symbol is same. So I'll just quickly check for the both the thing. So without decrypting, also uh, we are able to get some information. Uh, we are able to distinguish between them. Correct. So RSA encryption leaks some partial information concerned with the plain text. Okay, thank you so much.